Hello and welcome to this video lesson. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to what is meant by point of intersection of two functions and what are some ways of solving for this point. All right, let's start with an example right away. In this example, you have two options for choosing to go on different rides in a park. In option A, you pay $10 for every ride so you can either choose this option, go to a park, and just pay $10 for every ride. Or in option B, it's kind of like a membership cost where you pay $100. And once you pay that $100, then every time you go for a ride, instead of paying $10, you pay $750 for each ride. So now, uh, the first part of the question tells us to derive an equation for the cost of plan A and plan B. So in the cost, we can see that for plan A, every time you buy a ticket, you pay $10. So when you buy two tickets, you pay 20. When you buy three, you pay 30. And for this second plan, which is second, plan B, you pay a fixed price of 100. And then when you buy one ticket, you pay a total price of $107.5. If you buy two tickets, you pay 100 plus two times this, so 115 and so on. So we want to try to put this into an equation. And if we notice, in this case, our dependent variable is the cost and our independent variable is the number of tickets. So the more tickets you buy, the more you have to pay. So to represent this using an equation, we have to start off by identifying our variables. So we can say let's, usually our dependence is represented by y. So we can let y be the total cost. And our units for that is dollars. And we will let x be the number of tickets. And the units here is just numbers, so I don't I, we don't actually have to put anything down. So for plan A now, we know that our cost is y. And if x is the number of tickets, that means if we have, if we had just said y is equal to x, that means that if we have one ticket, one ticket means the cost is 1, but it's not. The cost is 10. And if you have two tickets, the cost right now is 2, but the cost is actually 20 because 10 plus 10 is 20. So we kind of have to put 10 as our slope, here the here our m or slope for the first one is ten tick ten dollars per ticket. So ten dollars per ticket is our slope or the rate of change in this case, the rate of change every every one ticket will cost ten dollars. So then y is equal to 10x. Actually, that, that's all we need to have because with this equation, if you have one ticket, then the total cost is 10 times 1, 10. If you have two tickets, 10 times 2 is 20. If you have three tickets, 10 times 3 is 30. And this is a very good explanation or equation that can explain plan A. So now for plan B... y is equal to, this time, every time you buy a ticket, you're paying $7.50. So your slope for the second one is $7.50 per every ticket. So we know that our slope is seven fifty or 7.5. And we're multiplying that by the number of tickets. But this is not enough to give us the whole picture because uh, in this case, you're paying $7.50 times one ticket 
means that you only pay seven dollars and fifty. But you also pay hundred dollars of entrance fee or kind of like a membership here. So you have to include that as well. And the hundred dollars doesn't change with the X. So if you buy two tickets, it doesn't mean that you have to pay two hundred dollars. That would be pretty uh, expensive. So you have to add the hundred as a fixed price, and the hundred dollars is not affected by X. So that means if you buy one ticket, then with this plan, that means you have to had pay the entrance fee of hundred dollars or membership cost of hundred plus the seven fifty for that ticket. So it will cost you hundred and seven hundred seven point five. And if you had buy two tickets, two times seven fifty would give you fifteen plus the hundred. 115. So this is how you can actually model things using equations. So you kind of find what your slope is and you put your slope is always mul multiplied by your x value or in this real life si situation x is the number of tickets and y in this case is your cost. And every real life problem might have uh, different variables associated with it, different slope value and different fixed or constant value. And you, you just got to look at the question and based on that, build your equations. Now, for part B of this question, it says, how many rides do you have to go to so that the price for option A and option B are the same? So if you were to go to one ride, Plan A would only cost you $10, and Plan B would cost you $107.5. That's actually um, definitely not the same price. So we're trying to figure out how many tickets will we have to buy for these prices to be the same. You can see that over a, over a long run, this plan will actually be cheaper because once you pay your $100, every ticket is going to be much cheaper. But... In a short run, this one is actually much cheaper. And you can see that with just looking at one ticket, $10 versus 107.5. So we're trying to figure out that number of tickets. Now, there are many different ways of solving this. And we're not going to go into details in this particular videos in all of them. Um, but just to think about this. If you were just in grade, let's say, three or four, and you were given this question, and you didn't even have this first part, you couldn't even actually put it into an equation, think about how you would actually solve this. Take about a minute or two, you can just pause the video and think about it, and then come back, and then we'll talk about this. And imagine, again, you didn't know how to solve this. You just had no idea how to create equations. You were just given this question, and you are trying to figure out how many tickets you, you would need to actually have the same price between the two plans. So if I were a kid, and if I were in grade three, four, or five, and if I were, if I were given a question like this, then I think the method that I would use is actually trial and error. So I would actually make a table like this, and I would say this is number of tickets. And this is the cost for plan A, and this is the cost for plan B. And depending on which grade I was at, the earlier, if I was in earlier grades, I would put one ticket, two tickets, three tickets, four tickets, and then if I were a little bit older, I would do it differently. So let's say I was a little bit older. So I, I would start with 10 tickets right away. And I would say that plan A, I would have to pay $10 for every ticket. So for 10 tickets, I would have to pay a total price of $100. Whereas for plan B, I'm paying $10 times $750. That's seventy-five dollars. Add that to the fixed price of hundred, and I would be paying hundred and seventy-five. So I can see that they don't match yet. So then I would try maybe twenty tickets, and with twenty tickets, Plan A would cost two hundred, and Plan B would cost two hundred and fifty. And then I'm like, oh, they're getting closer, but not close enough. So I would try thirty. 
30 would cost 300 and then it would cost 325 here and then 40 tickets and that would cost 400 and 400 and again I'm assuming that I have a calculator at this point especially multiplying 7.5 7 times some of these numbers is a little bit more challenging but the thought process is the same I would use kind of trial and error put different number of tickets figure out what the cost for plan A is what plan B is and then figure out where at which point do they match and I would figure out that it's actually at 40 here so another method here and this is something that we can now actually do is to actually graph the two plans so we kind of have a good idea of how to uh, of graphing these now we know y is equal to 10x would have a steep slope like this so that would be y is equal to 10x and this is my y this is my x and we know that the other plan is 100 plus 7.5x so our y intercept is much higher starts at 0 100 and our slope is not as steep so they will meet at some point over here we know what that point is right now we know that it's 40 and we know the cost is 400 so we know that this value is 40 and the point here is actually 40 and 400 we know that now but um, if we were to actually graph it and figure out this point, it would be at 40 and 400. So another method of actually solving for this point over here is using graphic techniques. So this point over here is actually ca called the point of intersection because that's the point where this line or this function meets or intersects this line over here. So we call that point point of intersection. And point of intersection simply explains where two functions meet. So the point at which two lines cross each other is called point of intersection. Sometimes in short we call this POI for point of intersection. This point identifies where the dependent variable and the independent variables are equal for two different relations or two different functions. So for example, if we look at the graph again, if we have one graph which goes like this and one graph that goes like this, the dependent variable of this graph is the y value and where they meet is right here and the y value of this one all is also the same right at that point of intersection. So the dependent variable are equal for the two different functions and the independent variable which is the x value in this direction which is yeah the x value is also the same at that point so this year or in this set of videos we will discuss how to solve the two equations simultaneously meaning at the same time and this is often called solving simultaneous equations so it's good to know the terminology as well by solving simultaneous linear equations, we can find the point of intersection of the two lines. So some of the methods for solving simultaneous equations that we will cover, we already covered trial and error. So trial and error is simply what we did in the last section of the video. We kind of make a table and based on the table, we will put down different values for x and look at the different y values. And we do that for both functions. And when we figure out that the y values are the same, we will figure out what the x and y values are for that point and we will solve that using that method. The other method is graphically. So graphically we will graph the two functions when actually figure out where they meet. So the next video will cover that. And the other two methods, one of them is called solution by substitution, which we will cover in a separate video, probably part three of linear functions point of intersection videos and the last method is called solution by elimination and these two methods are algebraic methods 
and much more useful for some of the more challenging functions. And again, these three methods will all work for more challenging options, whereas trial and error is a little bit easier when you have simpler numbers, but when the numbers are really large, for example, if your point of intersection was 1,723,000,000, and let's say it was just a very, very large number, it would be much more challenging using method of trial and error to solve the equation, whereas these methods are actually much easier to use.